So guys, in previous video, you learned about uh, what is Next.js, what are the features it offers you, uh, what are the benefits uh, you can gain from using Next.js. This is basically uh, allowing you server-side rendering. So in this video, we're going to learn about uh, how to go ahead and set up your Next.js application. So what we're going to do is we'll go to our terminal. Okay, and Next.js has got a very extensive documentation which you can learn and, and you can see a lot of websites are using, big companies are using, you have Marvel, you have Google Marketplace, you have Envision, and you also have uh, Style Component, IOTA, Twitch, yeah, for at and so all these big companies that you already use in Next.js. It's pretty reliable guys. Okay? So what we can do is we can go to learn and you can also earn points when you complete these courses. Okay, uh, you can go to getting started, you can start now. So the best part is that all you have to install is just three things. Just React, React DOM and Next. So we'll create a directory called Next app. And we're gonna do we'll go we just go into this directory. And then we'll do npm init, yes. And it's going to create a package.json file for us. So I've already opened this, you can see. Okay, so we've got all of this over here. And now, all we have to do is just install three things. One is next, second is next app. Sorry, it's going to be react, dom. And next, just the, these three things. Okay. So once this is installed, uh, all you have to do is just go over here and just create a directory called Pages. Okay, and this directory name needs to be exactly how it is Pages. It cannot be anything else. And if you create a file called index.js over here. Next.js will automatically pick up this and consider that this as a view and it's going to go ahead and make it available to you at the root URL. Okay. So the best part when you're using Next.js is that you don't have to import React when you're using functional component. If you're using class-based component, then yes, you need to import a uh, component because uh, you are going to extend React's component. But if you're using functional-based component, you don't have to. And the best part is that the if you're using the latest features of React, which are like hooks, then you don't actually have need the uh, class-based component because you can use state inside a functional component. So we don't do that. So let's create a component called index. And it's going to be a functional component. I'm going to use the arrow functions. Let's just increase it and just do export default index. So you can write it with React over here. And let's just return div and we can say, okay, my page is on the same thing with two JSX. Hello. Okay, uh, there are a few more things we need to do. We just need to go ahead and add these commands. Okay, so like this into our package.json file okay so all we have to do now is just do npm run there npm run there it's already installed on the required packages so it's going to make your site available at localhost 3000 You can see now, hello world. Isn't that simple, guys? I mean, you just potentially didn't have to do anything. All you had to do is just install next, uh, React DOM, and React. That's all you had to do. I mean, just do a couple of commands like npm yes, and just create page over here. Uh, one, yeah. And just create a function component. It's available to your index.js. And the best part is that if you go and create about, 
do it. So import, sorry, forms. You can say about components. You can say div about. Brilliant. So now, what do you expect to see? If you go to slash about, I believe that it should be available. And there it is, guys. You can see that about is available. Isn't that brilliant? So, in the next video, we're going to talk about how to go ahead and create links. Okay, see you then.